first of all we have to cut our fabric strips exactly on the bias if we want curved binding so that's um, not necessarily binding for the edge of a quilt or also if you want to do bias vines and strips on an applique block so stems and vines and things like that on a quilt so if it's going to go around curves we need to cut it on the true bias and the true bias goes 45 degrees from the selvage edge of your fabric so if you've bought yardage or if you've bought a fat quarter then we need to find where that bias angle is before we cut it and if you look on most cutting mats they'll have a 45 degree line on the cutting mat and also on most rulers so if you look at this here's a 45 degree line but there's also a 30 degree and a 60 so you have to make sure you've got your 45 on there so to find the true bias if you've got a fat quarter and this one's got a bit chopped out of it but find your selvage or your cut edge and then hopefully your um, the cut edge here has been cut square to the selvage when it's been cut off the bolt and then we just fold that bias edge up to the cut edge that was cut at right angles to the selvage so if I show you again if we put our selvage edge on a straight line and then this edge here should have been cut at right angles to that and hopefully that was square across the bolt of fabric so we take that selvage edge up to the cut edge and so that now should be a 45 degree angle now you can simply place your ruler on there and cut a strip or you could have also come back to your selvage and put your 45 degree line along there and get your 45 degree or bias strip cut along that way if you're cutting a lot at once if we fold that back up there and you can see that that, that um, angle there, particularly if you had wider fabric, is almost too long for your cutting mat and too long for your cutting ruler. So if you're cutting a lot at once, another little tip is that you can fold this over like that. And as long as you've got it all nicely lined up, then you can cut through all layers at once and cut your bias strip. If we just need a straight piece of fabric, to make a stem so a stem that's going to be straight or a small piece of um, perfectly straight um, bias if we're doing a, um, a straight edge binding then you can just cut on the straight grain so from selvage to selvage so I'm going to go ahead and just cut a small strip here on the bias as if I was making a 45 degree a, a, a quarter inch um, stem so I'm putting my 45 degree long line along here and I'm going to cut to get my 45 degrees oh that did not cut try that again pull that away now if I'm going to make a quarter inch by a stem then I want to cut my strip double that width so I'm going to cut it half inch and I'll just cut now remember it's on the bias so it moves quite a bit so I'm double the width of what I want it finished there's one and another And you can just keep cutting those if I wanted to make a one inch finished stem then I would need to cut a two inch strip so that's double the finished stem width and there's my two inch piece there so that's cutting first method of making bias strips is just a bias maker 
Now they come in lots of brands and sizes. Um, our preferred brand is the Clover brand. They um, just seem to work best. And it's usually printed the size on there. So this is Clover Japan 6. So it's a six millimeter or a quarter inch. And so is this one, but it's a different brand. The quarter inch on the end. And this one is a 12 millimeter or a half inch. And so you can see the width across there is the finish width of your bias stem. So if you use um, that one, you're going to get a half inch finished bias strip. And if you use the smaller six millimeter, you're going to get a six millimeter finished bias strip. Uh, these ones work exactly the same. This one's just designed to have a strip of Lysa fix, so a fusible webbing paper you can buy on a roll or you can cut your own. And that feeds through at the same time and fuses onto the bias strip, so then you can just fuse it onto your fabric. I don't tend to use that, I just make my bias and use basting glue. And this one's just got the little handle. Okay, so when we're making bias strips with these, we need to cut our strips, remember, double the width that we want it to be finished. So a six millimeter or a quarter inch um, bias maker, we need to cut the strips at half inch. And here's my strip cut at half inch. Now I like to use some best press or some spray starch, and you can either do it once you've got it in the bias maker, or if you're doing a lot, you can just simply, oh, I'm nearly empty. Just simply pile them all up and get them nice and damp like that before you start. Then we take our bias maker and you can see in here there's a little opening at the top here away from the handle and same on this one there's a little opening there. So we need to feed if you have the opening to the top and you just want to feed the pointy end of your strip in there. It just needs to curl over until you can see it appear in there. And then just take a pin and use that to slide it down the slot until it comes out the end like that. Then you just pin it into your ironing board or your ironing mat, whatever you've got. Nice soft surface so you can pin it in to hold it. And then for the narrow strips, I like to have um, it with the strip at the top so my seams are going to press underneath so I can hold it for much longer and keep it um, under the iron for a lot longer and I simply put my iron on the end of the bias maker and just push it along or pull your strip along if you need to and you just want to make sure that this stays even along the top there and doesn't go to one side and then with a nice hot iron you can use a steam iron if you haven't used the starch Go nice and slowly so it's got time to set the seam and either steam it set or dry out that starch so that it's nice and set. If your strip is really long and you reach the end of your ironing board, then you just pull the pin out, move it along, repin and keep going. And if you needed to do meters and meters of this for a very large quilt or a border a vine around the whole border of a quilt, then you can join these bias strips. You can join them before that you pass them through your bias maker. And then when you get to the seam, you just ease it through as you take it through your bias maker. And there's our bias strip there with our two raw edges folded and pressed to the center. So when we put that on our project, we've got no raw edges showing out on the edge. Now, If you needed to join them, you would take your two pieces, and I'm just going to cut this, and you would join them with a bias seam. So you've got them on the 45 degrees, you put them on top of each other, a little offset, so that your sewing or stitching line would go from that junction point to that junction point and that's quarter of an inch away from there so from there straight across to there and then once you stitch it and fold it out you will have a straight line along there and along there trim those tails off and press the seams open to reduce the bulk and then you can just feed that through 
your bias maker as you get to this tight end here just gently nudge it through and ease it through and then you can have meters and meters all pass through at once into one long strip let's just do that once more so my little gap is at the top I'm going to poke it in till I can see it take my pin and pull it down pin it into the board and then very slowly just press it as it feeds through the little bias maker giving it time to set that seam dry out my starch or if I had steam to steam down the folds so it was nice and set and your little um, edges don't pop up and open out see how it's sitting nice and flat um, without the steam or the starch I tend to find they just open up again and then when you're trying to applique them down you end up with little raw edges peeping out the side and that's the first method and I think the easiest method if you've got the tools um, to make your bias strips in all sizes so from a quarter inch right up to two inches you can get bias makers for and probably even bigger that's method one Making a bias strip method two is using the Sasha tools from Pauline's Quilters World. Uh, that's an Australian company that uh, came up with this little tool to make all different width bias strips or binding strips. And depending on the width of this hole here is what size it is. This is a one inch. And um, so for that, I've cut a two inch strip of fabric. So to get started, I'm just at one end going to fold both pieces to the center and press that just to get my start done then I'm going to take it up through this hole and down through the other side then I'm just going to use one of these little double pronged pins to pin that in so both sides are pinned and it's not going to distort now you could spray this with a bit of starch if you want um, or not up to you depending on how well you want it to hold and then the tools are designed that your iron just fits there and you simply I don't get caught up slide your iron along like that and it feeds through and presses sorry I'm running out of cord just like that and again you could join them and keep pulling pull, uh, pressing your strips through or you can just do one strip at a time so there's our bit of turned over strip seams to the center and there's our nice little bias stem strip there finished so that's the Pauline's Quilters World or the PQW Sasha Tool Method three of making your bias strips. I've put two long pins into my ironing board and I've poked it in and up and then in and up. And the distance between here and here is the finished size of my binding, my bias strip. Okay, so half an inch I'm aiming for. And then the distance between those two pins is the width of my iron. Okay. Now it takes a little bit to get started but what we need to do is poke under here and just turn it to the center and then the same under this one so imagine if you're doing a long strip it works quite well okay so once we've got that running and you just need to help it a little bit again I'm going to give it a little bit of starch and you just sit your iron on top and then gently feed that through and just make sure your seam here you're just holding it so it curls up and your seam stays in the center rather than going to one side and that's a bit of a cheats way of doing it when you don't have a tool but you don't want to be pressing those two edges in and burning your fingers 
So you can imagine if I had meters and meters of that and just kept feeding it through, then there's my strip and there's my two raw edges into the center on the back. So that's a little home hack with your ironing board if you don't have any tools on hand. Two large pins. This distance is the finished width of your bias and then you're going to cut your strip twice the width and this distance is the width of your iron. Okay. Method four. So for this method we're actually just using our applique paper. So that's our iron on leave in wash away paper. You can see the shiny side there. So we're actually just doing a template of the stem whatever it needs to be for your pattern so we just you would just trace the template or you can use a ruler and a rotary cutter if you just know that it's half inch straight or something like that where you can trace the template so I've just done one straight stem and one curved stem here shiny side down onto the wrong side of the fabric press it onto your fabric and then we're going to roughly cut out with a scant quarter of an inch seam allowance And the ends of our stems are probably going to tuck underneath a flower or a petal or into a seam so I'm not going to worry about that too much. Now the outer curves I'm not going to clip but the inner curves I'm just going to clip every now and then and not all the way to the paper because I am on a bias grain here so it's going to fold around quite nicely. So taking out my glue pen, so this is my water soluble glue pen, glue along the edge of the paper and just fold over that seam allowance. So this is not really making a pre-prepared bias, it's more of an applique method. But when you've got small bits that you know exactly what size they are, it's a really quick and easy way to do it and they're also very accurate. So I just fold until I feel that edge and push the fabric, the seam allowance, down onto the glue. And then the outer curve will just work its way around the edge of that paper template. Don't worry if we've got excess fabric here that's going to be sitting underneath. We just want to make sure we have a nice, flat, smooth curve and press it if you want and there's our little curved stem pop it on here you can see it perfectly smooth curved stem and a straight stem so I could do that right down to an eighth of an inch so a very narrow piece of paper and you just cut your seam allowance um, a lot narrower so it doesn't poke out once you fold it in and you can do very accurate very tiny stems that way okay I've got one more trick to show you and then that's um, the end of our lesson on bias lines and stems. Okay, technique number five. If you've got little tiny, particularly quite narrow um, stems to put into an applique project, then you can simply trace your stems onto your background fabric. You use a light box or similar. And then you can either just use a Roxanne's basting glue, so that's a washout applique glue, or you could just use your glue pen and run your glue along the line. And then take your pre-cut bias strip and run it just inside the inner line there and curve it around so that you're easing it around the curves because it's on the bias so it will curve quite nicely okay and give that a press so that it sits and it sits nice and flat and takes in all of the um, curve that we've moved around the bias and I had a needle okay 
So now I've just got my normal applique needle and you could do this on your sewing machine as well. So I've just got a fine applique thread and I'm going to do a running stitch or on your machine you would just do a normal straight, fine straight stitch along where the other line would have been. So an eighth of an inch away. I'll do this quite quickly but normally you would have a fairly small stitch. So I used a friction pen which means when I ironed it that line disappeared. So if I'm not right on my line underneath it won't matter because it's just disappeared. Friction pens are great to use when it was going to be covered anyway. Um, there's a little bit of doubt about using them and wanting them to disappear where they might be seen because they can reappear. But if it's under your applique piece and you weren't going to see it anyway, then it's really handy. Okay, so I've done a running stitch down the other side of my stem. I'll just finish that off quickly. Okay. Then what we do is, you now sometimes you may need to trim this back a bit more, but we put another row of glue, and it could be your glue pen or it could be Roxanne's. And then we're going to fold this to our stitch line and then roll it over. Okay, so we're rolling it over. So it just covers. Fold it to your stitch line and then roll it over onto your glue. Pressing will help to ease it in around that curve. To the stitch line and over onto the glue. And then you would just applique down the other side again by hand or machine. So you would just stitch down that curved side that is covering the raw edge underneath and you've got a nice fine little one eighth of an inch stem by a stem. So that's the last method I'm showing you today. I hope one of these you love and you probably will find a place to use all of the different methods. Sometimes um, different methods suit, suit different ways and different projects that you're doing. Um, but find the one that you love most for the bulk of it and you know everything there is to know. I'm sure there's more out there. If you've got a better way, please let me know. I'm always open to learning new things. Bye.